Warriors of the lands between, all ye tanks, spellcasters, vit gougers, bleed builders, and challenge runners, prepare yourself for battle against monumental foes. Elden Ring has a plethora of excellent boss fights that will crush, burn, stab, and drag players' faces in the mud. But despite how difficult they may seem, a lot of these boss fights are actually quite reasonable, tough but fair, and manageable with a few well-timed rolls. Although there is one boss fight in Elden Ring that really pushes the limits of the tough but fair argument. It won't take much of effort to guess who it is, but Melania Blade of Mikula is perhaps the most difficult enemy in the game. She continues the From Software tradition of a beautiful lady kicking the crap out of players. We had Lady Maria from Bloodborne, Sister Freed in Dark Souls 3, Emma the Gentle Blade in Sekiro, and now Melania. Although in their quest to make her difficult, the developers may have turned Melania into a Mary Sue. But is she? In order to answer that, we need to establish what a Mary Sue is. The phrase Mary Sue originates with Star Trek fanfiction back in the 1970s. A whole bunch of female fans were writing Star Trek fanfiction and inserting themselves into the stories they were writing. The editor, Paula Smith, noticed an emerging pattern with these self-insert characters that they were exceptionally beautiful, talented, strong, intelligent, popular, and a whole bunch of laughably perfect traits. So Paula Smith wrote a satirical story making fun of these recurring self-insert characters. The main character was a lieutenant named Mary Sue, who was 15 and a half years old and pretty much outshone everyone on the Enterprise. Upon its publication, the name Mary Sue stuck around as the author's favorite character that can do anything and is comically overpowered. A Mary Sue is a super idealized character who has been granted world-shaking power and talents to get them out of any situation, no matter how ridiculous. Characters like this are typically considered a sign of atrocious writing that belongs in Godric's chamber pot. And if you think only female characters can be Mary Sues, you'd be wrong. Male characters, who are virtually flawless and talented, can also be Mary Sues. So is Melania Blade of Mikula a Mary Sue? Well, let's explore it from a gameplay and lore perspective. Analyzing the lore of Melania to determine if she is a Mary Sue or not is more tricky than other games out there. The obscure and vague lore makes it difficult to determine the exact events of Melania's life. Hope isn't lost though, and there are several pieces of lore that are definitely known. Melania is the twin sister of Mikula, and child of Merica and Radagon, which is quite the feat considering Merica and Radagon are the same person. We see this in the final boss fight, and the statue in Landell. Yep, I got the footage this time. Although having parents with the same genetic makeup causes some issues with their offspring. Both Mikula and Melania were cursed at birth. Mikula was cursed to always be a child, and Melania was inflicted with scarlet rot at birth. Later on in life, Melania found herself a master to train her how to fight. We know of this master from the Blue Dancer charm and the prosthesis wearer heirloom. This is all good lore in the case of Melania not being a Mary Sue. A Mary Sue will require very little training to become the master of a field, or they will just magically have the aptitude to become a master of a subject immediately. But this isn't all the lore. This is just the lore that makes Melania not look like a Mary Sue. Melania is an Empyrean, meaning that she is a candidate to replace her mother as the god who rules over the lands between. And in case you're wondering, the other Empyreans running to replace Merica were Mikula and Rani. But the one piece of lore that solidifies Melania as a Mary Sue comes straight out of her mouth when she says, I am Melania, Blade of Mikula, and I have never known defeat. The thing about Mary Sues is that they rarely lose. When it comes to fighting, a Mary Sue will clear the entire board with greater skill than anyone else which Melania has been doing her entire life. There is one instance in the lore where Melania almost lost a fight, and that was when she was fighting Radon. The two fighters faced each other in Kaled, and the battle ended in a stalemate. But was it really a stalemate? During the fight, Melania released the Scarlet Aeonia, an attack of hers that inflicted the entire land with Scarlet Rot. Yeah, the reason Kaled has become the infested land it is now is because of Melania's fight with Radon. While Melania was dragged back to the Halig tree, Radon was stuck in a now rot-infested land and became afflicted with Scarlet Rot. 
By the time the Radon Festival occurs, the Scarlet Rot has atrophied his brain and reduced him to a mindless beast. If you think about it, the Radon Festival is really just one big mercy killing for the husk of a once great champion. Even in a stalemate, Melania ultimately becomes the victor. What makes this worse is how she achieved this stalemate. Apparently, this was the first time Melania ever released the Scarlet Aeonia. She just whipped out a never before seen attack that was powerful enough to alter Kaelid's ecosystem and prevent her from losing. In order to make sure Melania has never known defeat, the game has turned her into a massive Mary Sue with overly exaggerated talents and power. But this is just the lore side of things. We still need to talk about what she's like in gameplay. Now, for as crazy difficult as Melania is known to be, her stats are actually quite reasonable. It's time for some numbers, you nerds. In a new game cycle, Melania has an HP of 18,473 and a stance of 80. Stance is the invisible stat that is broken down every time an enemy takes damage. When the stance hits zero, the enemy's stance will be broken and players can come in for a critical attack. HP and stance vary between the enemies. Moog, Lord of Blood, has an HP of 18,389 and a stance of 110, although Moog does recover 25% HP during his phase transition, leaving his overall HP at about 22,900. The Fire Giant has by far the biggest health pool in the game, of 42,363 HP and a stance of 120. Dragonlord Placidusax has an HP of 26,651 and a jaw-dropping 160 stance. Compared to the stats of these other boss fights, Melania appears to be quite manageable. And unlike Elden Beast, which is totally immune to bleed, poison, frost, rot, and sleep, Melania is susceptible to bleed and frost. But she does have crazy high resistance to poison and rot. As another bonus, Melania can be knocked down by strong attacks, which you will not be seeing while fighting Dragonlord Placidusax. With all these bonuses in mind, Melania doesn't seem that hard, but these are only the numbers and don't reflect the full fight. Melania has two phases to her boss fight, but she's different from other bosses. Most boss fight phase transitions will be prompted by depleting the HP to a certain degree, usually around the 50% mark. Melania doesn't enter her second phase until her entire health bar is completely depleted. It is here that she enters her second phase. Her Scarlet Rot is unleashed, she gains these new wings of hair and butterflies, and almost all her clothes disappear. In case you're wondering, no, I don't know the lore explanation why she loses her clothes. Fortunately for YouTube age restrictions, she's not entirely naked, and she now has this bikini of Aeonian butterflies, rotted skin, and moss that blends in with her skin color. Functionally, she's the same, with the same resistances and defenses, which makes no sense. I'm no expert on fantasy combat, but wouldn't a rinky-dink gambeson give more defense than bare skin? Even Princess Leia's gold bikini would give more defense than this. That's actually made out of metal. Along with this new look, Melania recovers 80% of her total HP. Adding that up with her first phase, Melania has a total HP of 33,251, more than surpassing Moog Lord of Blood or Dragon Lord Placidusax's HP. It's an annoying trick, but it was probably even more annoying for the developers. At launch, Melania had a bug that could be used to bypass the entire second phase. If players ended Melania's first phase with a critical attack, she would spontaneously die at the beginning of phase two. So how did From Software fix this? Well, they solved the problem by making it impossible to kill Melania with a critical attack in the first phase. I'm not kidding. My footage of this event is a little janky, but it shows how Melania will hold onto just one HP and even has a little bit of invincibility afterwards. Great job, guys. Instead of working backwards and figuring out the problem, you decided to give her this unbalanced plot armor that prevents her from dying. If this issue arose with any other boss in the game, that boss would have been neglected or nerfed, but not Melania. Way to go playing favorites, FromSoft. It's not like the life stealing isn't broken enough already.
You all knew we would be talking about it, but the lifesteal is by far the most unbalanced ability Melania has. Every time Melania deals damage, she recovers a bit of HP. This healing on hit will drain HP from the player, the spirit ashes summoned, and if the player is blocking her attacks with a shield, she will still gain HP from those attacks. Not only does this make her theoretical health pool even larger than 33,000, it also discourages certain playstyles, since blocking attacks will just benefit Melania, and Spirit Ashes are a serious risk since she will just gore them and replenish her HP. This healing ability cannot be countered with any items or debuffs. There isn't even a solid lore explanation for this, she just happens to have one of the most broken abilities in From Software history. The only way to make sure that Melania does not suck the life out of you is to get good at dodging attacks, and good luck with that. Granted, many of Melania's attacks are challenging, but reasonable to dodge. Except for one. Waterfowl Dance has to be the most aggravating attack in the entire game. Unless players have created a build based around evading this one attack, or have gone through the training gauntlet to figure out how to avoid it, getting stuck in Melania's Waterfowl Dance is near certain death. Melania is insanely powerful, but this isn't the end of her crazy abilities. Melania is able to animation cancel. Every animation the player takes will play an animation. It could be a sword swing, a dodge roll, or an anime looking Ash of War. Under normal circumstances, actions will have animations that cannot be interrupted. Kind of like casting Terra Magica, but the player can't bail out of the animation before the enemy lands an attack. Melania doesn't have to deal with that. She can cancel stagger and attack animations into blocks or spin away. This means she can recover faster than normal and gain an unfair advantage over the player character, who is not able to do this. In other words, she's cheating. In addition to animation cancelling, Melania has hyper armor for most of her attacks, which have the added bonus of preventing stance breaking. If you want more information about this, I recommend watching Swagapogo's Turtles videos on the topic. He goes into way more detail and explains this better than I have the capacity to. Regardless of how bad I am at writing, the point still stands. Melania is programmed to break the rules of the game to artificially be more powerful. Considering all these powerful traits, the inability to kill her with critical attacks in the first phase, the overwhelming attacks like Waterfowl Dance, her ability to break the rules of the game, and that aggravating life-stealing ability shows just how much special treatment Melania has received from the developers. Melania Blade of Mikula is widely known as the most difficult boss fight from software has ever created. But she's not the only difficult boss fight in the game. Plenty of other enemies will absolutely wreck players, and while I haven't gotten around to playing Shadow of the Erd Tree yet, some of the new boss fights are giving Melania a run for her money as the toughest boss in From Software history. That being said, it's difficult to imagine From Software creating a boss as difficult as Melania ever again. Her difficulty comes in part due to her high aggression and powerful attacks, but most of her difficulty comes from these borderline unfair abilities. Because of this, I can confidently say that Melania is a Mary Sue. With that in mind, I have one more thing to say. Melania Blade of Mikula is perhaps the best Mary Sue ever written. Think about it, people hate Mary Sues, and there is nothing in the lands between more infuriating than having a frenetic battle end in a sudden waterfowl dance. In response to this daunting endeavor, a frenzied menagerie of tactics like forums, wikis, YouTube tutorials, organized summon gangs, let me solo her, one-shot builds, cheese strats, and unethical weapons of war are being levied at millennia. An army of mages, warriors, bodybuilders, one-shot builders, incantation spammers, naked challenge runners, gun lovers, bleed builders, spirit ash summoners, and angry elderly people have assembled at the gates of Elphile to put this privileged Mary Sue in her rightful place. From Software didn't shield Melania from defeat because it made good lore. It was so players could be the ones to hunt down and kill this obnoxious Mary Sue themselves. And I think that is some awesome writing. Just 
Please don't make it so annoying next time you do this, Miyazaki. Thanks for watching to the end. Like and subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you guys some other time. Bye.